Fish are undeniably the most important beings on Earth. There's a reason, after all, why God created the water before land, and fish are the first mentioned creatures he created on the fourth day. Or if you're not of such a persuasion, aquatic, and thus fishly life, was the first recorded on Earth, so no matter what you believe in, they are early adopters regardless. By this, it is clear that since day one, fish have been imbued with an immense importance for pretty much everything. And as the old saying goes, the more that is given, the more that is expected. This, the fish certainly deliver on, serving as an excellent source of food for so many creatures on Earth, be they fellow aquatic dwellers, roaming the skies, or walking on land, swimming in their great big flocks and schools about all the world's oceans. And with this heavy burden laid upon them, I think it's only proper to give them their fair dues of what they so rightfully deserve. And that is why, in this video, I will be ranking my top 10 favorite fish. Plus, I just love fish. The Top 10 Fish Number 10 The Leaping Blenny it might seem a tad bit weird to start off the list of the top 10 fish with one that doesn't even live in water, let alone spend any time in any body of it. And while I do understand these concerns, this fish definitely does its part to earn this spot on the list. Yes, they might be awfully afraid of flowing water, and they are very limited in the environment they can inhabit, being very tied to the coast and needing to moisturize constantly. But venturing onto land is quite the achievement for any fish in the first place, and it would be a shame not to recognize it as such. For these brave pioneers, though early in their quest, are living far more dangerous and daring lives than you could ever dream of. Now that we live in the age after Earth exploration finished, and before space exploration is begun. So if you ever dare think of yourself as more highly, or more worth, than these brave Silly, but still brave souls. Take a look in the mirror, you bastard. Number 9. The Halibut. The Halibut is a pretty dumb fish. Just look at it. Why does it look like that? They go from looking relatively normal as a child to looking absolutely retarded with their eyes. Why? Well... I know why. It's pretty obvious. It's to look up as they scour the bottom of the sea, but still. They just look so freaking goofy. But I once again didn't place them on this list without reason, as these are personally some of the tastiest fish I know. Prepare you well this fish in any way, be it boiling, frying, drying, fucking fermentation or bleaching, the end result is all wonderful in every sense of the word. So that, in addition to having such a laughable appearance, earns them a comfy spot on this list. Sorry, Flounder. You just aren't as tasty as your brother. Number 8. The Gar. Ever thought about like a swordfish, but less cool, but at the same time even awesomer, because they have very nice teeth? Yeah, that's basically this fish. Its slim body making it able to swim very fast and effective, as it absolutely gores its foes. It is a very badass fish, and I think it would look good with a banging pair of sunglasses. They even have the sheer power and innate alpha behavior to attack birds and other coastal creatures dwelling on the surface. Just, yeah, it's a very no-nonsense fish, and it's very cool. What more can I say? Number 7. The Catfish. Despite their name, this fish is awesomely honest in what it portrays itself to be. Their big moustache, far from making them look like cats, make them instead look like wise oriental mystics hiding the secret to life itself. And like these very wise men, they have realized that, in a competitive pond or river, it is wisest to avoid all fighting altogether. As Sun Tzu says in The Art of War, 
The art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Choosing instead to be bottom feeders and live contently with what they can get their hands on down there. Far from the needy retardation of the animal they take their name from, I must say. In addition to this level of ancient enlightenment, they can also defend themselves well with a venom fang, living by the mantra of every learned man also being a soldier. Truly one of the strongest and most well-adapted ways of life for a fish out there, and I can only show them their due respect for it. Number 6. The Wolffish. The Wolffish, taking its name from another vicious terrestrial killer, is also a bottom feeder, though its looks might not be as convincing for the Enlightenment Department as its brother. Unlike this previously mentioned brother though, instead of only having a venom fang for self-defense, this little feller has one of the most powerful bites for a fish out there, being strong enough to bite through solid rock. This is why, if you ever find yourself at a petting zoo, don't pat the wolffish. Number 5 Seven. Salmon have a good reputation among most people, and is probably one of the most universally recognized fish there is. There is a good reason for all this. For in its migrational journey, only the strongest survive as they jump up the rivers and waterfalls to their sanctuary, feeding both animals and fishermen alike on their travels, as well as making sure that only the strongest of their species survive to mate through the entire ordeal. For a group of salmon might be an easy spot for a man, bird or bear to pick some off from, but this, in addition to the anti-current swimming they do, ensures that only the strongest, and therefore the meatiest survive, serving as even better food for whoever fishes these guys up. Their personal responsibility takes them through an ordeal that feeds thousands and thousands of people, and if that isn't responsible, in doing your natural duty in the world, then I don't know what is. Number 4 Trout Trout, then, being almost exactly like salmon in the taste department, are also excellent fish for feeding. But why, after my whole spiel about how great the salmon is in its ordeal through life, have I gone and put the trout above it, you may ask? Well, it is as simple as this. While salmon travel courageously to feed as many people as possible, achieving greatness through it, equally as important are fish that provide a reliable source of food. And it's important to celebrate this, as chasing a vague sense of fame like the salmon might make many and itself happy, the humble trout knows its place, in the same lake it grew up in, knowing that one day he must serve his community by becoming food too thus in no way having any less sense of responsibility and duty than the salmon. All it changes is knowing that the route to get there in the end doesn't need to be so hard as others might imagine. And I'd say it's all the better for this. Number 3 Herring Herring is simply put awesome. Such a small fish feeding such an amount of people is cool enough on its own, but what really cements it, cements it, cements it. Yeah, there, and I'm, I'm cement. I'm like, I'm, I, I I'm, hate, I hate cement. When you it's, sit, that's that's proof enough that it's bad. I hate cement. It's so, it's so bad. It's the silvery color they emit. All of them swimming in unison. Also, you can pickle herring, so that's neat for festive mornings in the fridge. Simply put, awesome. Number 2 Pollock Pollock is just plain tasty. I don't know what more to say. They're just your standard fish. Swimming in schools, average size, and on the whole, really tasty. That is what earns them this spot. Before I get to number 1 though, there are far too many remarkable fish out there for me to mention. So here are just a few randomly assorted ones before we get to the very best. The blowfish, for instance, is cool in that it can inflate itself, and is poisonous to any that consume it. 
which isn't the best way for it to defend itself, saying as it has to die for the poison to take effect, but nonetheless, we humans have found a way to eat it. Tuna are really big and fast, and can feed a lot of people due to how large they are, and are notable for these things. It's also interesting when you have to spear a fish instead of just using a plain old rod to catch them. Mackerel are notable because they do not have a swim bladder inside of them that makes them able to float, so they constantly have to swim and never rest. Makes for some pretty lean meat on their bones. And last before the best, the Groper. It has a funny name, and is very powerful, so that just makes it inherently cool. Now then, without further ado... Number 1. The Cod. It's downright undeniable that the cod is the king of fish. They are almost as tasty as the pollock in every way of preparing it, coming pretty darn close. But to make up for this, if you can even call it a weakness, they are both larger and harder in every respect overall. Their meat, for instance, unlike the pollocks, will not disintegrate so easily if you happen to overcook it. Being larger, they can also feed more than a mere pollock in a single catch. And they have done so, as is their duty for thousands of years for so many peoples throughout history, especially my own. And as they continue to carry on this dutiful tradition around the northern seas, they sport the most dashing fashion therein, always being seen in their iconic beard that can really only be fitting for the one and true king of the fish. So what have we learned today, guys? It's not too late to change your Hikikomori ways. Just do some fishing. But sing, sing, we run our way home Across the Pacific and through the unknown with God as our shepherd, then no harm shall pass. We'll be 